and I know my world, but now with recruiting, now I, I don't want to tweet. Now I have to, but it's a direct message. It's this. It's top recruits. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this because now I get all tweet alerts and I'm seeing what they're putting out there on their own stuff. Oh, they put their lives out there. I'm like, really? You want to put all this, what you're doing, type of person, uh, it, it's amazing if you've ever seen that, and, and people police it. So two years ago, I wouldn't let any of my team be on Facebook. They had earned the right to give it back. Okay, because Facebook and Twitter, you can have NCAA violations on there if you don't understand things, or they're putting stuff out that you shouldn't just put out there. So I, I, we police it. We have someone on our staff that polices it. Um, we have social media training now. So our compliance person comes in and someone that's really good in social media and you know, trying to teach them. You know, you can't, you think you're responding to somebody, but you shouldn't be using that type of verbiage or language or whatever it may be. You think it's fine because you but when you really sit back and read it, it's it's not really good. So that's a big thing. And then with recruiting, you know, it's it's a whole ball of wax. It's very difficult uh, to get to know kids. Um, but what will happen, this happened with the men this year, it'll probably happen to us next spring, is that they're just going to deregulate everything and we can call 15s and 16s. Okay, it's hard enough talking to a 16, 17 year old on the phone. How about a 14, 15 year old? They want to communicate text wise because they're, they're, they're nervous, which they should be. I mean, they're young. But now they're going to say, okay, you can call. 15s and 16s is starting a certain date anytime you want. You can text them, email them, call their parents. So if one kid's being recruited by 50 college coaches or universities, I can call that kid five times a day. I can text a kid five times a day. I can do whatever I want. I don't think it's good. But the NCAA doesn't really care what I think. <laughs> you know, a lot of people. Because I'm worried about the kids, the student athletes. It should be in their hands, not in our hands. And that's why they have the rules. But it's too hard to regulate because people are cheating. So if people are cheating, they can't catch them. So I'll just open it up so everybody can do the same thing. <clears throat> so those are the things that are happening in the recruiting world. So it's so difficult. Okay? And everybody's like, oh, you know, you didn't get number one in the country or number two in the country. That's not a pretty fit. Are they a student? There's a lot of kids all over the country that Matt Painter and I cannot recruit because there's no way they're going to get into Purdue University. So, got to think about that. When you think we lose recruits, there's probably something else going on. Not always, but there's certain conferences and certain areas of the country that students not first. Okay, so that you just got to be cognizant of that. Uh, as for our team, our team's great. Um, our seniors are Dre Mingo, Sam Osterella, and Chantel Poston. Uh, Dre was, uh, had an opportunity to come back a sixth year. Nancy Double A got that one right. Um, she's, um, she, in, in her near future, maybe four years down the road or three years, she's going to be a pediatric cardiologist. If you didn't know about her, she had bacterial meningitis two years ago, almost died, lost her hearing. Um, then she came back, uh, part of her hearing is back. Uh, then she blew her ACL out last year. So it was just one thing after another for the kid, and then she was granted this. Um, this bracelet I have on is pretty cool. Um, she is doing a nonprofit organization. So she's a student athlete. She's working on her master's in toxicology right now. Um, and she's a captain on our team. Can play in the WNBA if we can get her through a year of health, um, if she can stay healthy. And she's doing a nonprofit organization, and it's called Sounds of Serenity. She's going to help young deaf kids. So she is off the chart. When you're talking about special, it's like Lauren Biaton was special. They did above and beyond being a student athlete. Lauren played for us as at Vanderbilt Medical School, gave back to Hurricane Katrina, just top, top. So Dre is just an inspirational story. Every time she walks in the gym, I just have a smile on my face because she shouldn't even be here. She probably should have passed away two years ago with how sick she was and really I didn't give her good chances. So she has a will to live. And there's a reason. She's an instrument of God, and we all know that. Uh, Chantel Poston, fifth-year senior. So she's uh, doing fantastic things for us. Um, 
to really finish strong at the end of the year, go-to player. Uh, Sam Osterella um, is a fourth-year senior, so we got the super, super senior, the super senior, just a senior. That's how they introduce themselves. Uh, so, um, so that's been that's been great for us, and uh, you know, she just has the complete game to her. And then KK and Courtney and Dini are in the junior class, um, which is our kind of the, the fire, the energy, just. Uh, the catalyst to our team, those three. Then we have Tori Thornton and Lisa Clemens that were the two sophomores from Indiana. Then we have a transfer, Camille Redmond from Texas. She's about 6'4", um, very strong athletic. She's the one, if you came to any of our games, we'd have the five inch heels on, so you thought she was 6'9". <laughs> uh, she's into fashion, as you can see. We had to change some of her outfits a couple times before she go out. But, <laughs> Um, and then another person is Whitney Bates. She's a transfer from Maryland. We're just trying to say, don't go to Maryland, just make the right choice and come to Purdue the first time since we've had three. But Whitney uh, has similar skills, kind of the same resume as Gray uh, had coming to us. So we're hoping great things she'll play next year. She'll be sitting out this year. And then our freshman class uh, collectively is probably uh, one of the best classes we brought in. We have April Wilson from Louisville, Kentucky, who's a point guard. Hayden Hamby, she scored over 4,500 points in high school, so we're hoping she can make a basket. Um, she's from Alabama. Jocelyn Massey, extremely athletic individual. Uh, and she will be, um, she's from Detroit, Michigan. And then Taylor Manuel, uh, big girl. As tall as she is wide, and we don't have that. You can't get around her. And she, but she's got guard-like skills. She's got great handles. She can bring it up the, uh, bring it up the court, have guard feet, uh, but, you know, 6'2", and very uh, wide, and, and it's something that we don't have. I won't tell you her weight. <laughs> Women, you can't talk about that, so uh, you, you, you can't miss her. She, but she's, those four have just unbelievable, have come in uh, responsible, accountable, have handled academics very well, just want to do the best they can for their team. They're honored to be here. They're not a freshman class that come in. Do they all want to play? Absolutely, but they're, it's not about them. They've already learned that it's not about them. And that's why this team is so great already. Because as soon as the freshmen, the freshmen get it. We'll find out about the sophomore class, where that class is, but it's not about them. And that's why things are going to be great, and our schedule is very tough. Um, we lost five seniors last year. Brittany's in veterinarian school here. Chelsea Jones is in medical school in Arkansas. Um, and then uh, Sam Woods is chemical engineer. She got a job. She had like 10 job offers. <laughs> so she took the one out in New York. Um, and then Antoinette and Alex Gacker are playing overseas. So they're going to make great careers for themselves. And that's what it's about. The proudest moment is when I see them walk across the stage with their degree because they're a champion. And what's really neat about women's basketball here, since 1995, every woman that has played basketball has left with a championship ring on their hand. Oh.